In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the Rode Wireless Go lavalier mic system. The Rode Wireless Go is definitely not the first wireless lavalier mic system on the planet. In fact, wireless lavalier mics have been available for decades and are available with a whole host of options. The Rode Wireless Go simply keeps most of the features on regular wireless lavaliers and yet adds a few unique features of its own. The unit that I'm testing today is the white version, which Rode sent me for the purposes of this review. The Wireless Go is also available in black. The first and most apparent feature of the Wireless Go is how compact the system is. Both the receiver and transmitter unit are little squares that measure a little less than 2 inches by 2 inches in size. Both units are also much slimmer than other lavalier systems, measuring in at a little under 3 quarters of an inch thick. And this compactness is extremely important, since these systems are designed to be used out in the field, where you really don't want to be carrying around a lot of weight and bulk. The build quality is also pretty good, and the design, especially in White is reminiscent of Apple products. The Wireless Go is sold as a base kit, which includes the transmitter and receiver, a coiled patch cable, two USB-C to USB-A charging cables, two fur windshields, and a soft neoprene case to carry the transmitter, receiver, cable, and mic. At this point, you're probably wondering, what about the lavalier microphone? Isn't this supposed to be a lavalier mic system? And the answer is yes and no. The wireless Go system is designed to work even without a lavalier mic. The transmitter unit has a built-in omnidirectional microphone, so you can just clip the transmitter unit somewhere close to your talent's mouth and quickly capture audio. The only downside with this approach is that you can't really conceal your microphone and transmitter, which is one of the biggest advantages of using a lavalier microphone in the first place. For applications where you need a more concealed lav mic, Rode sells an add-on Omni lavalier microphone that plugs into the transmitter like any other regular lavalier microphone system. In addition to being able to use it with a lav mic, Rode also sells an add-on omnidirectional handheld mic which also plugs into the transmitter and allows you to interview people out in the field. You can also plug in other lavalier mics from other manufacturers that have a 3.5 mm output. Hooking up the system to a camera is pretty straightforward. You can mount the receiver unit to the top of a hot shoe mount on a camera. This cleverly doubles up both as a clip and as a hot shoe mount. And both the receiver and transmitter have one of these on the back. Once the receiver is mounted, power it on by pressing down on the power button on top. The screen then comes to life and shows you the battery level, volume level, and very importantly, a blinking Wi-Fi symbol. And the reason it's blinking is because the transmitter hasn't been turned on yet. You can now clip the transmitter on the talent and power it on using its power button. Once it's turned on, you'll notice that both blue LEDs on the transmitter are on. You'll also notice that the Wi-Fi symbol on the receiver screen has stopped blinking, and this indicates a solid connection. The connection between the units is through a 2.4 GHz radio link, which is on the same frequency as some Wi-Fi systems. More about that in a minute. And you also want to plug the patch cable into the receiver unit and then plug the other end into your camera so your audio flows into the camera. You'll also notice that the screen now displays the audio levels from the transmitter. In case your audio is clipping, you can adjust the input levels using the DB button on the bottom or in camera. I recommend keeping the input level as high as possible on the receiver and then reducing your input level to an acceptable level in your camera settings. This seems to produce the best quality audio. Another thing you'll notice on screen is the battery level indicators for the rechargeable batteries on both the transmitter and the receiver. This rechargeable system is both a blessing and a curse. It's great because you don't need to buy batteries for it. However, if the battery batteries are depleted, you can't swap them out quickly like with other lavalier systems which use alkaline batteries. The batteries do charge through a USB port so you can charge them almost anywhere and Rode boasts a battery life of up to 7 hours for both units. So the big question really is, how does it sound? So for starters, I'm going to test it with my Canon SL2 so you can hear how it sounds. And when listening to this next section of the video, I recommend using a pair of headphones so you can really hear how it sounds. 
So the audio you're hearing right now is from the Rode Wireless Go's built-in microphone. I have it connected to my Canon SL2 and the receiver is mounted on top of the camera. The transmitter is clipped to my shirt and I'm about 7 feet away from the camera in a relatively quiet room. And what I'm going to do is keep quiet for a few seconds so you can hear the background noise that it picks up. And let me now read you a quote so you can hear how it sounds. The best and most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched. They must be felt with the heart. And this is a quote from Helen Keller. And the audio you're hearing right now is from the optional omnidirectional lavalier mic that you can buy separately for the wireless go. This is also clipped to my shirt and is still connected to the Canon SL2. Let me keep quiet for a few seconds so you can hear the background noise that it picks up with the lavalier mic attached. And I'm again going to read you the same quote from Helen Keller. The best and most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched. They must be felt with the heart. And as you could probably tell, the wireless Go sounds pretty good when paired with the Canon SL2. However, that unfortunately isn't the case with all cameras. So to show you what I mean, I'm going to connect it to my Panasonic G7, which is very commonly used by semi-professional filmmakers and YouTubers. So I now have it connected to my Panasonic G7, and the receiver is mounted on top of the G7, and the transmitter is clipped to my shirt, and the audio you're hearing is from the built-in mic on the wireless Go. And just so you can hear the issue, I'm going to keep quiet for a few seconds. And as you probably noticed, there's this high frequency whistling or squealing that it picks up in the background. And let me keep quiet for a few more seconds so you can hear it again. And in case you're wondering, this can be heard whether you use the built-in mic or any external lavalier. And this problem, in my opinion, is caused by interference from the camera's Wi-Fi unit, which, as I mentioned earlier, operates at the same frequency as the mic's radio link. And just so you can hear what good audio should sound like on the Panasonic G7, I've connected my trusty Sennheiser G4 lavalier system. I've clipped it to my shirt. And the audio you're hearing right now is from that microphone system connected to the Panasonic G7. And just to show you what the background noise level sounds like without the interference, I'm going to keep quiet for a few seconds. So as you could probably tell, the interference has gone away with this microphone system. So it seems to be an issue with the Rode and not so much an issue with the G7. And the reason this is important is because the G4 system does not use 2.4 gigahertz. It's a more traditional radio lavalier system, which doesn't seem to have the kind of interference issues you would find with a 2.4 gigahertz system like the wireless Go. Why this happens with some cameras and doesn't happen with others is unknown, even by Rode. And they don't seem to have much of a solution other than try moving the receiver away from the camera using an extension cable, which pretty much defeats the purpose of a camera-mounted lavalier system for run-and-gun shooting. So with all that said, should you buy the Rode Wireless Go? Well, let's start with who shouldn't buy it. First of all, if you're looking to use this in any professional setting, this is definitely not something I would recommend for you. I would recommend the Sennheiser G4 system, which has the features and ruggedness that professional shoots require. For semi-professional filmmakers or YouTubers, if you test the system with your camera and are having interference issues like I did, I recommend getting a more traditional, budget-friendly system like the Audio-Technica Pro 88 series. 
However, if you're a semi-professional filmmaker or YouTuber and have tested the Rode Wireless Go with your camera and don't have any interference issues, the Rode Wireless Go is still a really good option. It's very well built, has a lot of nifty features, and very importantly, produces excellent audio quality. I'll leave links to all these systems below in case you're looking to buy one. And if you own one of these, do let me know about your experience in the comments below. Hope this video has been useful. If it has, please hit that like button and subscribe for more reviews, unboxings and how-to videos. And once you've subscribed, don't forget to hit that bell icon to be notified when I upload new videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time.